So my app called Haptic Haven just hit 10,000 downloads 269 days after it was launched. And this is crazy to me because when I developed it, I was pretty much just making things up as I went. So I'm gonna tell you the story of how I managed to get a simple application onto the App Store top charts. It all starts in April, 2020. I was in my iOS bootcamp and we were at the point where we were trying to release personal apps to the App Store as a learning experience and as a way to build up a portfolio with the hopes of landing that coveted entry-level iOS developer role. So I was working on an app that reminds you to eat your avocados before they go bad because apparently this was a big issue in my life at the time. Silly idea, it was a silly app, but it was a lot of fun for me because it was the very first time that I was working on a larger project that took more than just a day to complete. As a longtime iPhone user, I knew that a lot of apps made use of different styles of vibrations to create a more immersive experience when interacting with the UI. So I thought it would be really cool if my app did this, but I didn't know how to do this since I was still really new to development at the time. So guess where I turned? Turns out that there are nine types of built-in haptic feedback that you can trigger for different actions within your app. Now with this basic understanding of how they work, I just needed to feel each type so that I could decide which kind of haptic to put where. Super easy, or apparently not. Okay, so this one's gonna be medium impact. All right, now what did rigid impact feel like? Oh, maybe I should go with success notification. I feel like there's gotta be an easier way to do this. Fast forward to June, 2020, it's been two months since graduating my bootcamp and I've been blasting out applications with basically nothing to show for it. Turns out all the avocados that were being saved from AvoKeeper just wasn't that impressive to employers. And so I opened my notes to find an idea for a second App Store app with really the only goal of trying to boost my efforts to woo employers. Out of this list of wacky ideas, I settled on haptic tester thing because it seemed like a good balance of it's not gonna take a year for me to develop and also it's something that I would personally use. With the idea locked in, all that was left to do before getting started was to give this project a name. And alliteration seemed like something that a smart marketing person might try and do. And so sure enough, we had a winner. So I created a new Xcode project and got to work. Step one, put nine buttons and labels on one screen and trigger the corresponding haptic type when a button is tapped. Simple as in anybody who's built a basic Xcode project or two could probably do this in about five minutes. Step two, make it look half decent, not so simple. And this is really the essence of good app development. We all learn or are taught how to make things work, how to navigate to different screens, how to populate and pass around data. And that's all super important and necessary, but something that looks like this just doesn't cut it even if the functionality works flawlessly. If you end up working for a company where you're not the only developer, then there's a good chance that the company also has designers who will make all of those decisions for you. And all you have to do is take the mockups that you're given, implement the functionality and the look exactly to the specifications of those mockups without ever having to give a single thought into things like what a corner radius should be on a certain element or what opacity to give a shadow. But when you're on your own, you don't have this kind of luxury and so it becomes your responsibility to now make every single one of these decisions. So I went over to the best place that I knew to get app design inspiration, dribble.com. As it turns out, there's a design trend called new morphism that can give buttons and elements a certain kind of 3D effect by having a dark shadow on one side and a light shadow on the other, giving the button a very tactile look, almost as if it wants to be pressed. So I figured out how to apply this effect as well as added in some secondary features with things like an info sheet describing common use cases for each haptic, the ability to share given code for a specific haptic and throw on a menu screen with things like a link to Apple's developer documentation and a few other things to give it a more completed feel. My intention here was to create the perfect solution for the problem that I was facing three months earlier when I was struggling to figure out how haptics worked and felt for the first time. So after about 40 hours of work, I had completed the minimum viable product. I had plenty more things that I wanted to add, so I mapped those out for future versions, but felt like this was the right time to just pull the trigger and send it over to Apple for review. When I woke up the next morning, I had a notification saying that Haptic Haven was now live on the App Store. Mission accomplished. 
Now, at this point in time, I had accomplished the goal that I set out to do, which was have a second App Store app published that I could now add to my resume and to my portfolio. And not having a job at the time, this was really all that I cared about. But I was proud of the app, and after all, it's meant to help iOS developers, so I did share it on an iOS Slack group and a couple other places. And after the first seven days, I had 73 downloads, which I thought was really cool. I didn't have a grand ASO strategy or anything like that in place, and so I thought that things would kind of taper off after the initial sharing that I did, and after the first month, maybe have 100 downloads. And then a Saturday rolled around. And what's really special about Saturdays is that it's the one day a week where you're allowed to share a personal app on the iOS developers subreddit. And so I did. And the activity on the post that I shared turned out to be greater than what I had expected by a lot. That Saturday and Sunday combined drove 408 downloads. And then shortly after that, it had reached number 14 on the App Store top charts for developer tools in the US. Daily downloads did settle down after that initial spike since Reddit phases out posts, but organic downloads did keep rolling in after that which is always the hope that you get to the point where people are naturally finding your app without you having to directly share it anymore. As I mentioned before, I didn't get to include everything in the initial MVP launch that I wanted to, but since then I've been able to add things like dark mode, alternate app icons, intensity configurations for haptic types that allow it, and a redesigned menu page. And with nearly 11,000 downloads to date, the app remains on the top charts to this day. What I love about personal side projects is that they serve as a playground for you to learn and try out new things. For me, the fact that updates are actually pushed out to a decent amount of users definitely adds a level of thoughtfulness that goes into what and how I'm coding. And I think it just makes it more fun. In terms of just download numbers, I think that niches have a lot of power, especially underserved niches. In the case of this app, it serves no purpose for most people, but if you're in the small niche of iOS development, then it does one thing really well. As you go broader, the competition tends to be greater, making it harder for your app to get noticed. But the more you niche down, the more likely your app is to be found and the more willing people are to try out new apps that may not have many reviews yet. At the end of the day, what drives App Store downloads is primarily just marketing. And so if your main goal of having an app on the App Store is to help you get a job, then don't worry about download numbers because you're mainly gonna be assessed on how you code, not how many people you can convince to download your app. Today, Haptic Haven is number 45 on the developer tools top charts, but tomorrow it's gonna to be something different. So it wouldn't make sense for me to conclude that I'm a better coder than number 46, but not quite as good as number 44. That's not how the top charts or download numbers work. So focus on your coding technique first and then promotion second. Now, if you're trying to monetize an indie app, that's a whole different beast where you really have to know how to promote and optimize your app for the app store. But as you can see from my story, this whole thing started out because I just had a problem and I knew that the right software could easily solve that pain point for me. And sure enough, some other people had the exact same problem and have enjoyed using the solution that I created. And so I encourage you not to be afraid of sharing your work and putting it out there because it's almost a guarantee that someone else could benefit from the solution that you've come up with. Thanks for sticking around, keep grinding, and I'll see you next time.